NASA just got embarrassed, big time. SpaceX launches rockets for $62 million. NASA, $4 billion for the same job. That's not a typo. That's your tax money disappearing into thin air. Here's the brutal truth. SpaceX is making $15.5 billion this year, while NASA's budget shrinks to $18.8 billion. A private company is about to out-earner America's space agency. But here's what's really shocking. NASA has launched their new rocket once in two years. SpaceX question mark every other day. So where exactly are those billions going? The answer will make you furious. Let's dive right in. Here's where it gets absolutely insane. SpaceX's revenue this year, $15.5 billion. That's up from 13 to $14 billion last year. But here's the kicker. $11.8 billion of that comes from just one thing, Starlink satellites. Think about that for a second. A company that didn't even exist 23 years ago is now making more money than NASA's entire budget. How is that even possible? Let's rewind to 2002. SpaceX was literally just carpet and dreams. No rockets, no satellites, no billion dollar contracts. Just Elon Musk with a crazy idea and a lot of money to burn. Their first rocket, the Falcon one. And guess what? It failed three times. By 2008, SpaceX was on life support. One more failure and they were done. Game over. But then something incredible happened. They nailed it on the fourth try. That single launch in September 2008 saved the company. But here's what's really wild. NASA actually helped save SpaceX. They gave them a $1.6 billion contract right when they needed it most. NASA basically created their own competition. Fast forward to today, and SpaceX has 8,000 satellites orbiting Earth. 8,000! That's more satellites than some countries have ever launched combined. But here's where it gets genius. Every Starlink satellite is basically a cash machine in space. Monthly subscriptions from millions of users worldwide. Government contracts, hardware sales. It's a recurring revenue goldmine. While NASA is still asking Congress for money every year, SpaceX is making money every single day. Now let's talk about that jaw-dropping number from earlier. NASA's space launch system, their new rocket, costs $4 billion per launch. SpaceX's Falcon 9, $62 million. That's not a typo. That's not an exaggeration. That's your tax dollars at work. But wait, it gets worse. A 2022 study revealed something that should make every taxpayer furious. SpaceX isn't just 10 times cheaper than NASA. They have 30 times fewer cost overruns. Think about what that means. NASA doesn't just cost more. They can't even estimate their own costs correctly. Here's where NASA's problems become crystal clear. Since 2006, SpaceX has launched 500 times. That's one launch every 14 days for nearly two decades. NASA's brand new SLS rocket, one launch in two years, one. In 2024 alone, SpaceX completed 134 launches. NASA, still trying to get their second SLS launch off the ground. But here's the real shocker. SpaceX is aiming for 170 launches this year. That's nearly one every other day. Meanwhile, NASA's Artemis program keeps getting delayed. First, it was 2024, then 2025, now 2027. This is where SpaceX completely revolutionized space travel. Their Falcon 9 rockets land back on Earth and get reused. It sounds like science fiction, but it's happening dozens of times a year. Here's the math that will blow your mind. A brand new Falcon 9 costs about $62 million, but the reusable version? just $15 million in operational costs. NASA's space shuttle program, $1.5 billion per flight. That's 100 times more expensive than SpaceX's reusable rocket. But here's the genius part. SpaceX charges customers $67 million for a reused rocket launch. They make about $50 million profit on each flight. Then they use that profit to fund Starlink and Starship development, it's like having a money printing machine that also happens to go to space. So why can't NASA do what SpaceX does? One word, bureaucracy. 
Every decision at NASA has to go through layers of approval. Every budget has to be approved by Congress. Every failure triggers investigations and hearings. NASA spent $43.5 million on STEM engagement programs in 2024. That's nearly the cost of one SpaceX launch, spent on feel-good programs instead of actual rockets. When SpaceX fails, they fix it and launch again next week. When NASA fails, they spend two years investigating what went wrong. Here's something that should terrify NASA executives. In September 2024, SpaceX pulled off the first commercial spacewalk in history. They did it for a fraction of what NASA would have spent. While NASA's astronauts are still riding Russian rockets to the space station. Wait, actually they're not. SpaceX is flying them now too. The Polaris Dawn mission proved that private companies can now do everything NASA does. Faster, cheaper, and with more innovation. NASA's budget has grown 51.7% since 2019, reaching $25.5 billion in 2024. But here's the brutal truth. Most of that money isn't going to space exploration. The White House just proposed slashing NASA's budget to $18.8 billion by 2026. Why? Because they are finally realizing that private companies like SpaceX can do more with less. But here's what's really shocking. Even with their massive budget, NASA can't launch astronauts without SpaceX's help. They can't resupply the space station without SpaceX. They can't even get to the moon without SpaceX's Starship. This is where things get really interesting. SpaceX isn't just trying to beat NASA. They're trying to get to Mars. Their Starship rocket is specifically designed for Mars missions. NASA has been talking about Mars for decades. SpaceX has been building the rocket to get there. While NASA debates and committees and investigates, SpaceX is actually testing their Mars rocket. They've already completed multiple test flights. Here's the weird part. NASA and SpaceX are actually working together on the Artemis program. NASA is paying SpaceX to build the lunar lander for their moon missions. Think about that. NASA's own moon program depends on SpaceX technology. The agency that put humans on the moon in 1969 now needs a private company to get back there. It's like the ultimate role reversal. NASA has become the customer and SpaceX has become the supplier. But SpaceX isn't the only game in town anymore. Companies like Sierra Space are trying to catch up. Their Dream Chaser space plane is getting ready for its first missions. Sierra Space has raised $1.7 billion and secured $3.4 billion in contracts. But compared to SpaceX's empire, they're still playing catch up. The real question is, can anyone else replicate SpaceX's success? Or is SpaceX's combination of reusability, frequency, and innovation too far ahead? Here's what every American should be asking. If SpaceX can launch rockets for $62 million, why are we paying NASA $4 billion for the same job? If SpaceX can launch every other day, why is NASA launching once every two years? If SpaceX can make $15.5 billion in revenue, why does NASA need $25.5 billion in taxpayer funding? The numbers don't add up, and taxpayers deserve answers. SpaceX's success isn't just embarrassing for NASA. It's completely rewriting the rules of space exploration. When a private company can outperform a government agency with unlimited funding, something is fundamentally broken. But here's the real twist that nobody saw coming. But here's the real twist that nobody saw coming. SpaceX isn't just competing with NASA anymore, they're replacing them. And the scariest part, this is just the beginning. Think about it. We just witnessed the complete transformation of an entire industry. A private company took on a government monopoly and won, decisively. But this isn't just about rockets and satellites. This is about what happens when innovation meets bureaucracy, when speed meets committees, when profit meets politics. SpaceX proves something revolutionary. Private companies can outperform government agencies, even in the most complex industries imaginable. Space exploration, rocket science, literally rocket science. So what other industries are next? What other impossible government monopolies are about to get disrupted? The space race isn't over. It's just getting started. And companies like SpaceX are writing the rules for the next chapter of human exploration. What do you think? Are we witnessing the end of government-led space exploration? Or will NASA find a way to compete? Drop your thoughts below. 
And if you want to stay ahead of the space revolution, hit that subscribe button. Because trust me, this story is far from over. The future of space belongs to whoever can move fastest. And right now, that's not NASA. SpaceX just revealed Haven 1's interior, and NASA's 25-year-old ISS suddenly looks like a cramped metal box. We're talking maple wood walls, queen-sized beds, and a massive 1.1-meter observation dome. But here's what really shocked NASA. It costs five times less than their stations. Why is a private company beating NASA at their own game? And how did they build something this advanced so quickly? Let's dive right in. Picture this scene at NASA headquarters. Engineers staring at Haven 1's interior photos, complete silence. After 25 years and $150 billion spent on the ISS, a three-year-old startup just made their flagship project look like an outdated science experiment. The International Space Station, cramped corridors, sterile walls, astronauts sleeping in phone booth-sized compartments. It's functional, sure but it's also a reminder of what happens when bureaucracy meets engineering. Then Jed McCaleb founded Vast Space in 2021. This programmer turned space entrepreneur looked at the ISS and asked one devastating question. What if we designed this for actual humans? The answer sits in orbit right now, and it's about to change everything. Step inside Haven 1, and your brain struggles to process what you're seeing. Fire-resistant maple wood panels line the walls. Not cold metal, not sterile plastic. Real wood that makes you forget you're hurtling through space at 17,500 miles per hour. But here's the genius behind this design choice. NASA spent decades studying astronaut psychology. Their conclusion? Sterile environments drive people insane during long missions. The wood panels aren't just beautiful. They're medically necessary. The common area spans 24 cubic meters. To put that in perspective, it's like having your entire living room floating in space. At the center sits a massive 1.1 meter domed window offering 360 degree views of Earth below. Compare that to the ISS cupola at just 80 centimeters. The difference? Astronauts can finally see what they're fighting to protect. But wait, there's more that'll blow your mind. Remember those sleeping pods on the ISS? Astronauts literally strap themselves to walls like cargo. No wonder they suffer from chronic sleep deprivation and psychological stress. Haven 1 completely revolutionizes this. Four private crew quarters, each featuring queen-size sleeping systems with custom pressure distribution. Think of it as the world's first zero-gravity mattress that actually works. Each room includes built-in storage, personal vanity, entertainment systems, and direct SpaceX Starlink connectivity. Astronauts can video call their families in crystal clear HD while orbiting Earth. The psychological impact? Astronauts report feeling human again, more connected, more productive. This isn't luxury, it's mission critical engineering for Mars exploration. But here's where the story gets really interesting. How is a private company with zero government contracts outperforming NASA's quarter century of experience? Vast space borrowed Elon Musk's playbook and weaponized it. While NASA committees debate for years, Vast builds and tests. While government contractors inflate budgets, Vast slashes cost by 500%. Their secret weapon? Vertical integration. Instead of farming out components to hundreds of contractors, they build everything in-house. The result? A space station costing one-fifth of government alternatives. But there's a massive catch. NASA controls the market through their Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations Program. They've already awarded $415 million to established defense contractors like Northrop Grumman and Blue Origin. VAST has zero government contracts, zero guaranteed revenue, zero safety net. So how do they plan to compete against billion-dollar defense companies? Here's VAST's audacious gamble. In 2025, they're launching four astronauts to Haven 1 for a two-week mission. No government backing, no NASA approval, just pure demonstration of capability. 
Think about the sheer audacity. While NASA's chosen contractors are still drawing blueprints, VAST will have humans living in their station. While bureaucrats debate specifications, VAST will be proving their technology works. But this strategy carries enormous risk. If anything goes wrong, if life support fails, if docking systems malfunction, if crew safety is compromised, vast space disappears overnight. The pressure is unimaginable. Four human lives depending on systems never tested with real astronauts. A company's entire future riding on one mission. Yet CEO Max Hayot seems strangely confident. We are lagging behind, he